Boy, am I glad 2023 is over. We had so many amazing games come out, and I just had difficulty keeping up. Now that 2024 is here, the releases are going to slow down. Right? Right? Hey there. I'm Shinky, this is Shinky JRPGs, and this is where we talk about anything and everything JRPG. I was taking a look at the JRPG schedule to come out in 2024. Wall is going to hate me this year. So many banger RPGs scheduled to come out this year, and knowing me, I'm going to feel like I need to get them all. So I figured now is the best time as ever to talk about 10 JRPGs due out in 2024 that I'm looking forward to. Before we get into the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. It's a huge help to the channel, and let me know what games you're looking forward to in 2024. Anyways, let's get into 10 JRPGs that are scheduled for 2024 that I am irresponsibly hyped for. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, scheduled to be released on January 26, 2024 for the PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series consoles. Yakuza, or Like a Dragon, is a series that I really enjoy, but I'm always putting off in favor of other games. Historically, the Like a Dragon series has always been action RPGs, until Like a Dragon 7, where it went full turn-based. Infinite Wealth is a combination of the two. It features a dual protagonist system, where you can play as the hero of Like a Dragon 7, Ichiban Kasuga, who uses that game's turn-based system. And it also features the original protagonist, Kiryu Kazama, who has an ability that breaks the turn-based style and turns it into the original Yakuza style of gameplay. Personally, I think that's the coolest way to incorporate two different playstyles. Traditionally, this series has always taken place in Kamurocho and Sotenbori. However, Infinite Wealth takes place in Hawaii. I'm only three games in, but it'll be nice to have a little bit of a change of scenery for this one. While I am eight games behind in the series, I am still looking forward to playing this game once I get caught up in the series. Perhaps I should make 2024 the year of Yakuza for me, and just try to play through the entire series? Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, scheduled to be released on February 1st, 2024 for the PC, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. So I won't lie, I don't know a huge amount of information regarding Grand Blue. I've played the two fighting games, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus and Versus Rising, and I know that it originated from a mobile and web browser game. However, other than that, I don't know much else. I do know, however, that this game seems to have been delayed about 200 times and was basically vaporware but it is finally getting released this February. This game has to be one of the most visually appealing games I've ever seen, and the combat looks incredibly smooth, and I hope it plays as nice as it looks. This game also seems like it has multiple playable characters, so hopefully that prevents the game from getting stale, which is not uncommon with action RPGs when you're forced to the same fighting style throughout the whole game. I love bright and colorful environments, and that in itself is enough to make me hype irresponsibly. Persona 3 Reload. Scheduled to be released February 2nd, 2024 for the PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X on Game Pass. The end of January and beginning of February is just packed full of games, isn't it? Would it hurt to spread these games out a little? I'm only one person with limited amounts of time. Persona 3 Reload is a remake of Persona 3 and it looks so nice. Not Grand Blue Fantasy levels of beautiful, but it still looks really good. Persona 3 has always been my favorite Persona title, and I'm really looking forward to enjoying it again. I haven't looked too much into trailers outside of the announcement trailer, but I'm hoping they do something with Tartarus and maybe vary the dungeons a little bit, because originally, it felt as if you had the exact same dungeon just with a different tile set as you climb the tower. There have also been complaints about the fact that Persona 3 Reload does not include the PS2 re-releases FES content. Personally, it doesn't bother me that we aren't getting the additional story, The Answer, as The Answer was awful gameplay-wise. Seriously, everything had the one-hit KO abilities and they seemed to work every time, and The Answer didn't really add a huge amount to lore, so it's not a huge loss. I'm sure the people that love Aegis are gonna disagree with me here. But this is going to be a huge bout of nostalgia for me, so naturally I can't wait. The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4, scheduled to be released on February 16th, 2024 for the PlayStation 5. Another release of these games. I've talked about the Cold Steel games plenty of times on this channel, so I won't get into my thoughts on the games. However, I do wish that something could be done with the licensing between Exceed and NIS America, so we could get the first two Cold Steel games on the PS5 as well. And more importantly, 
the Trails in the Sky games. I personally don't see any reason to get these games as they are already available on the PS4 and the PS5 is backward compatible, so it seems like a pointless re-release. It seems NIS America likes to milk its Falcom titles because the same thing happened with Ease 8 and Ease 9. I guess picking this up might be a good idea if you haven't played Cold Steel 3 or 4 yet, as it does include the cosmetic DLC and it is a combo pack so you get both games at a lower price point, though I don't see any point in rebuying them if you already have them. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, scheduled to be released on February 29th, 2024 for the PlayStation 5. I lost my mind when this game was shown at the PlayStation State of Play, and every day I get a little more excited as the release date inches closer and closer. After playing Final Fantasy VII Remake and seeing the direction that the story is going, I can't wait to see where this game goes. I have baseless theories about what's going to happen, but no idea how they could or couldn't happen. Everyone knows of that character and how she dies, right? But is it still going to happen? Who knows? Maybe it'll happen to someone else. Or maybe our main hero Cloud is going to die instead and get replaced with Zack because at the end of the remake it leads you to believe that Zack is still alive. Or maybe Square Enix is going to go full chaos and kill off Tifa instead. I don't see them doing that. But this is Square Enix after all, and who knows what goes through their mind. I don't know what to expect with this game, and it has me all giddy inside. I can't wait to see how the plot unfolds. The Legend of Legacy HD Remastered Scheduled to be released on March 22nd, 2024 for the PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. Back when I did my Cry Machina review, I said that I'd never get excited for a Furio game again. But then I saw this game. I adore this game's art style. It almost reminds me of the Bravely series. Still waiting on that HD remaster, Square Enix. Anyways, this game kind of reminds me of the Saga series, with the way combat works and how you can learn moves mid-battle, and also how stats increase individually as opposed to being tied to a numerical level. The Legend of Legacy HD is a remaster of a 3DS game with the same name, and I enjoyed Alliance Alive. So here's hoping this one is enjoyable too. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going in with low expectations. Cry Machina really ruined my views on Furyu titles. A Yuden Chronicle 100 Heroes is scheduled to be released on April 23rd, 2024 for the PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Oh man, I was ripped to shreds when I reacted to the trailer of this game. I knew it was similar and a spiritual successor to Sakoden, but I didn't know how similar it was. Having not played Sakoden, I had no idea that so many mechanics of this game were taken right from that. This is another one of those absolutely gorgeous HD 2D art styles, and the combat is so flashy and so pretty. Team attacks and war mode too? Sign me up! Another game I can't wait for. Another game I can't wait for, and I'll just include it because they're supposedly so similar, but with Ayuden having an April 23rd, 2024 release date, I'm willing to bet that the Sakoden remasters are going to get another release date of something like April 16th, 2024. All the updates on Sakoden 1 and 2 HD have been mighty suspicious, almost as if they're trying to snipe sales from Ayuden. I see you, Konami. I see what you're doing. Saga. Emerald Beyond. Scheduled to be released on April 25th, 2024 for the PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android. It's always so weird to me that every time a new Saga game comes out, they always end up getting mobile releases. It happened with the remastered Saga Frontier, Saga Scarlet Grays, and now Emerald Beyond. Don't get me wrong, it's cool that it's getting mobile releases so it's available to more people, but I just have to question why. Anyways, this is another game that looks super interesting. I've always been interested in Saga, but almost every time I start them, I get overwhelmed with how non-linear they are and just move on to something else. Saga Frontier is the only one I've managed to finish. But with Emerald Beyond, I love the characters in this game. They're so well designed, and again, the characters and the environments are so colorful, and that in itself is enough to get me to have a solid interest in it. Hopefully, this one doesn't overly intimidate me. Visions of Mana, scheduled to be released in 2024 on PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X. And strangely enough, not on the Switch. I'm basically taking that as a confirmation that the Switch 2 is going to be coming out and this is going to be a launch title. 
I adore the Mana series, and Visions of Mana looks stellar and perfect in every way. The Mana series isn't something that I got into until pretty late, but I've loved the series since I've started it. Well, except for Donna Mana, but that game is a mess. Visions of Mana looks like a return to form, looking very similar to the Trials of Mana remake, but just a little bit faster. I also adore what I've seen for the boss fights, especially the ones that are coming back from past titles. They got insane glow-ups. I can't wait to see more news about this game, and I can't wait for another trailer that I can react to. If that's something that you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You're a special kind of bear. The Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak, scheduled to be released in summer 2024 for the PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. Finally, we get to journey through the land of Calvert, and we're free from Reen and his harem. All jokes aside, I am looking forward to a new protagonist and a new land to explore. Trails Through Daybreak features a combination of an action-based combat system and a turn-based combat system, allowing you to play as you see fit. I am always happy when we get a new Trails game, and I'm hoping Daybreak solves so many questions that were left unanswered from Cold Steel 4 and Trails into Reverie, hoping for a concrete release date soon. Those aren't all of the games I'm looking forward to, but just a handful of them. This year is already so packed full of games, and I'm sure more are going to get announced throughout the year. At this point, we haven't even had our earlier Nintendo Direct, and I'm sure if the new Nintendo console gets announced, a whole plethora of new JRPGs will get announced alongside it. Lots on the way, and I can't wait to play them all. What games are you looking forward to this year? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always lurking in the comments, love reading each and every one of them. If you enjoyed this video and want more reviews, top 10s, and trailer reactions, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, glad to have you here, and as always, have a wonderful day.